Today I would like to take you through a process of helping you purchase your first telescope. However, before we do that, I'd like to refer you to a delightful book by Timothy Ferris entitled Seeing in the Dark. In this book, Timothy Ferris rightly says, The universe is accessible to all and can inform one's existence with a sense of beauty, reason, and awe, as enriching as anything to be found in music, art, or poetry. People of all ages, from a four-year-old preschooler to those in their 80s and even 90s, enjoy the beauty and grandeur of the cosmos. Whether observing the craters and mountain ridges of our moon, enjoying the spectacular view of Saturn's rings, analyzing the famous shape of the Orion Nebula, or marveling at the size and distances of neighboring galaxies, there is a lifetime of discovery in the night skies. Stargazing gives each of us a special connection to the cosmos, and we begin to discover how vast, majestic, and beautiful is this universe of which we are a part. Again, Timothy Ferris quotes Stephen James O'Meara as saying, we're all star people in the sense that we're all created from star stuff. So it's in our genes, so to speak, that we're curious about the stars. They represent an ultimate power, something we cannot physically grasp. He says, when people ask, why God? They don't look down at the ground, they look up at the sky. When choosing your first telescope, we want you to experience the ooh and the ah of the beautiful things that you're able to see through the telescope and not be distracted with a jiggly mount and a narrow field of view, which so often comes with one of those department store trash scopes. There are many good resources on astronomy and on astronomy equipment. A couple of excellent books are The Night Watch Book by veteran Canadian astronomer and author Terence Dickinson and its companion book, The Backyard Astronomer's Guide, co-authored by Canadians Terence Dickinson and Alan Dyer. Phil Harrington's book, Star War, also offers excellent reviews and reports on many different types of telescopes beyond your first telescope. Dickinson and Dyer are editor and co-editor of the Sky News magazine and have dozens of years of experience in observing and testing equipment. Other astronomy magazines such as Astronomy and Sky and Telescope offer equipment reviews and suggestions on observing, along with sky charts for each month and things to watch for in the upcoming night sky. On beginning telescopes, the resources are almost unanimous in issuing a warning about avoiding department store trash scopes. Usually appearing on the department store shelves before Christmas, these scopes are boxed with photos of large, colorful nebulas and planets and promise several hundred power of magnification. Usually they are packaged with several useless eyepieces and perhaps a five times barlow. They are worse than useless because they can often turn a person against the wonderful experience of discovering the glories of the night sky. In recent years, the computerized telescope appeals to those who have grown up with the knowledge and benefits of computers. Terence Dickinson says, walk right past the computerized telescope that's on sale for less than $500 and sometimes much less in your local big box discount store. Hundreds of thousands of these scopes are cranked out each year. Sky News has tested this category of telescope and given models to beginners to try. Our conclusion is that computerized instruments in this price range should be avoided. Sometimes a person will say, I don't want to spend too much money on a telescope until I can see if she or he is interested. But rather than purchasing an inexpensive, difficult to use, and almost impossible to see anything type of telescope, an investment in binoculars and a good astronomy book like Nightwatch is a better purchase for igniting a lifelong interest in the night sky. When purchasing your first telescope, it's always good to ask, what are you intending to use the telescope for? There's quite a difference between a telescope that is going to be used primarily for astronomy and a telescope that you want to use for nature observing or other daytime use. There are other factors to consider, of course, such as price, the size, the portability, uh, the ability to set it up and use it easily. And so we'd like to go through several different kinds of telescopes that will cover each of these categories. Firstly, let's look at different types of telescopes. 
The refractor telescope is what you often will think about first when you hear the word telescope. Traditionally, it's the type of telescope that uses lenses for collecting the light and then bringing it to focus in the eyepiece. A refractor is one of the nicest scopes for looking at the moon and other planets because you get really crisp, high contrast, clear views. This is one of the favorite refractors because you can also uh, do daytime observing with it, do nature observing. People that have a cabin at the lake or a place beside the ocean often will choose this kind of telescope because they can do whale watching or see what's happening out on the water. They can do bird watching with it, but they can also turn it at night towards the stars. You will be able to see the rings of Saturn with this, a lot of star clusters, a few nebulas and galaxies. Another type of refractor is the one here, which also has a four and a half inch diameter objective lens. It is a longer focal length and might be a better choice if it's primarily for looking at planets and the moon. But this is a great scope for ease of use. You very quickly can move it to any place that you want, lock it down, and then use the slow motion controls for moving it slowly on the object. A second type of telescope is the reflector. This is the telescope that uses mirrors to bring the light to focus. A typical reflector can come in 6, 8, 10, 12, and even larger size because mirrors are able to be manufactured much more economically than lenses. The biggest telescopes in the world, such as on Mauna Kea in Hawaii and in the Atacama Desert of Chile, use mirrors for collecting the light because they can peer into the deepest parts of the universe with the amount of light that they collect. A reflector telescope, or a Newtonian, can come in many different sizes. This is an 8-inch Dobsonian, but there's also the 10-inch and the 12-inch. This is the diameter of the mirror, and the larger the telescope, the more light it gathers, and the brighter those celestial objects will appear. A third type of telescope is the compound telescope, here called the schmidt cassegrain This is a well-proven design of telescope using both lenses and mirrors, it offers that compact design, which is much nicer than the reflector telescope, but also sharp optics because of its longer focal length. The most popular size has proved to be the 8-inch schmidt cassegrain telescope, although these are sold in 5, 6, 8, 9 and a quarter, 11, and even 14-inch telescopes. This has become our most popular telescope, and so as we talk about recommendations for your first telescope, we're going to begin with this, and then we'll look at the more economical Dobsonian telescopes before looking at some larger computerized telescopes that might also be an option for you with your first telescope. The 8-inch Nexstar SE has become our most popular and best-selling telescope. It's that combination of affordability, compact design, the computerized design, so that once you set it up, it will find the objects for you and track them. In fact, it's such a popular telescope that we took one of these on a trip to South Africa. And here I am observing under the Southern Cross in South Africa with an 8-inch Nexstar SE. The views were fabulous in the Southern Hemisphere, and I had a compact telescope that I was able to take as checked-in luggage. We used a Pelican case like this to be able to transport the 8-inch Nexstar SE we didn't pay any extra baggage charges, it arrived safely on and off seven different flights. So in many ways, it is the most affordable, largest telescope that you can easily transport, even if you're flying uh, on an airplane.